if we put in certain rules as like rules of thumb, uh, then we when we get this this formulation of, of morality. So what it is for an act to be wrong. Kind of funny idiot. Sorry? We were talking about morality and the um, the whole you know that came from? That you weren't supposed to beat a woman with a stick bigger than your thumb. Uh, wow. <laughs> Excellent. Well I'll make sure to, to avoid doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Next is wrong just if it unexcusably breaks uh, a common sense rule which functions uh, to keep people from harming each other. So uh, on this picture, we have certain common sense moral rules. You've heard them. Uh, I'm not telling you anything new when I tell you that do not cheat, uh, do not deceive, keep your promises. Those are moral rules. Um, and uh, the way to, to, to see that, that the, 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 command, uh, the, the rule do not deceive, for example, is a moral rule. And so ask yourself this following question. What if everyone felt free to do that, to, to deceive other people? If everyone felt free always to deceive everyone else, um, trust would break down between people. And um, they would miss out on a lot of benefits. Right? So if your um, real estate broker you know, tells you, oh, yeah, the foundation is fine in this house, right? uh, feels free to do that, pretty soon you're going to be harmed and you, you buy a house that's uh, for, for much more money than it's worth you'll be in, in, in lots of trouble as far as your property is concerned just one example of the way that a lie can harm someone uh, if everyone feels feels free always to lie uh, lots of harm will, will ensue you will miss out on benefits and probably be harmed as well from lack of ability to trust each other uh, if everyone cheats right on a on a test um, Pretty soon, uh, the test won't test what it was supposed to. It will uh, allow people to, uh, to well, pass the test without actually having learned the material. Uh, learning will, as a result, drop. They'll miss out on certain benefits that they would have had. Uh, perhaps even be harmed as far as like you know not learning how to do basic math. It might be you know a way to be harmed, right? Um, Lots of, lots of questions that we can ask about, about these, um, but just, uh, just to present for the sake of the order, the, the ten moral rules that, that Gert says that we, uh, we should consider as the basic moral rules. You've got uh, do not harm, uh, which really um, comes into five direct moral rules. So you've got, you know, do not... Uh, cause pain, do not kill or cause death, do not cause disability, do not cause loss of freedom, do not cause loss of pleasure. Those all are five different kinds of, of harm, I think. Uh, I mentioned uh, Prom keeping your promises, don't deceive, uh, don't cheat. Um, if you have certain roles within society, you should play them. So, uh, one way to say it is, do your duty. If you're a parent, be a parent. Do the, the duties that are part of being a parent. If you're a teacher, go to school and teach. If you are an employee, do your duty as an employee. Or an employee. And if you feel free to skip work as much as you want, um, 
lots lots is not going to get done. Your 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 company will be harmed. Right. So uh, those sorts of sort of roles or duties of station are also moral. Uh, following doing those is a moral rule, plausibly. Um, uh, and lastly, the most contestable one is obey the law. Uh, if everyone feels free to break all laws, right? Uh, lots of chaos ensues. People driving on the left side of the road and the right side of the road at the same time, um, right? So we we can talk about exceptions to these rules, however, and certainly there probably are some times where civil quote, disobedience is called for. Um, there's also times when promises should be broken. If you can save someone's life by lying, you should probably do so. Um, right? If you can uh, prevent yourself from being killed by killing someone else, you should defend yourself in that way. Um, and Gert goes into a complicated uh, system for trying to discern whether, whether there are exceptions to the, to the moral rules. But at any rate, uh, it's at this level of easy to understand rules that he thinks that we should think about common sense morality. These are rules that we can and do uh, think about on a regular basis. We teach them to children. We train them to identify instances of cheating. We train them to identify broken promises and deception um, because it's at that level that even they can understand. The purpose of having rules to describe this generally is so that everyone can understand once they become of a certain age if you don't understand what's wrong with cheating, if you don't understand what's wrong with lying to people, then you just don't get morality. Uh, but as long as you're a moral agent, you, you're to, to blame for not understanding such a simple rule. So, um, now what's important about this harm-based conception of morality? I think the, one of the most important questions for figuring out how to think about uh, about morality is that everyone is vulnerable to harm. Um, I don't know about you, I've never met anyone who's invincible. <laughs> um, sometimes uh, my brother tends to think he is. You might know someone who, th who thinks they're invincible, but uh, it turns out they can, be, they can be caused pain psychologically and physically. Uh, and we all have pretty similar vulnerabilities. Right. Uh, at the end of the day, all of our skin can be pierced. Um, we all are subject to, die, to death. We can be disabled. Our limbs can be, can be cut off. Uh, our brains can be screwed with, etc. Uh, we're all vulnerable to being deceived, to having our promise, uh, promises to us broken, to being cheated. And um, uh, Debate, uh, we can debate what harm is, uh, but certainly these are, are five plausible candidates for, for what harm is. And um, it doesn't matter what culture you're from. You can, un you can un undergo pain, you can, uh, you, you're, you're going to die, but you can be killed prematurely, no matter what culture you're from. You can be, uh, can be maimed, can be injured. And, that's that's a stunning fact, right? Because um, because it it res helps us resist the following conception of morality. Some people think morality is kind of just a matter of opinion, right? It you know it's it's subjective. You, you hear that a lot, right? Uh, it's all relative. There was a TV show, I mean, definitely. Um, <clears throat> Right, because I mean, you know, some people they, they think gay marriage is immoral, or you know, homosexual sex that's immoral, uh, masturbation, right, uh, abortion. There's lots of moral dis dis dispute about morality, about what morality requires, uh, right? Whether you should uh, euthanize someone or do do your best to keep them alive, that's a moral issue, and there's lots of disagreement about that. So how could we ever agree? Um, people in other cultures, right? They uh, they, they think it's wrong to eat beef. Uh, other cultures think it's wrong to eat pork. Some cultures think that it's, it's right or it's obligatory, mandatory, to uh, circumcise women by cutting off their, um, their genitalia once they turn about 10, 11, or 12. Uh, 
maiming them for the rest of their life. But according to their traditions, it's a it's a it's a shame for someone not to have, to have that done to them. This position is known as moral relativism, and it can you can either be saying if you're a moral relativist that morality is relative to your culture, or you can be saying that morality is relative to your own subjective personal opinion. And it's a, it's a common view. Many people are tempted by it. But I think when we reflect on what morality is centrally about, it seems like the most important norms that we have, that we call moral norms, have to do with harms. Um, as well as rules which, if everyone felt free to break them, would result in a lot of harm. And uh, it doesn't matter what culture you're from, you're subject to harm. These rules are going to apply uh, in almost any culture where uh, people or humans are like us. Now maybe there is some culture out there in the Pacific where nobody will be bullshitted. Nobody can be deceived. And there, well, there might not be a, a rule that prohibits deception. I don't I've never heard of any such <laughs> island. Uh, were, to, were it to exist, morality there might be um, a bit differently understood. But still, for people like us with the same vulnerabilities we have, these are the moral rules. Uh, so uh, so this, this harm-based conception of morality, uh, I'll say one more thing, it doesn't demand tons of us, right? It's, it's, it's negative in that it says just don't harm other people. But it's not going to make it a, a moral requirement to give all of our money away to charity. However, uh, we certainly would, would consider it a morally admirable thing to, to be concerned about social justice, to, uh, to cultivate virtues and be uh, very kind and considerate uh, and pathetic. Um, Starting, starting organizations that help other people, prevent them from being harmed, or you know, give them a leg up, those would be morally admirable things. And this, can, this is part of the moral system too, according to me and according to Gert. Um, now, whereas all of these things I've been talking about are moral rules, we can also talk about moral ideals. And, uh, so he calls moral ideals, uh, ideals to strive for that reduce the amount of harm in the world. So if, for, for example, if, uh, if somebody starts a, a nonprofit organization that helps battered women, right, that reduces the amount of harm in the world because um, they're going to suffer less psychological trauma as a result of this, of this effort. Then there are utilitarian ideals, which, instead of reducing the amount of harm in the world, they increase the amount of good in the world, the amount of benefits. Um, so something like starting a business and you know, creating lots of goods that really help people out. Steve Jobs, right? he's not reducing harm, but he's creating good. Right? He's making iPads that really help people out. You know? mm -hmm. Increasing the amount of good and hence living up to a utilitarian ideal. <clears throat> now, um, so um, yeah, just one more thing. It, it, if if someone's tempted by by moral relativism uh, and thinks that um, that morality morality is a matter of opinion or of uh, your subjective upbringing, upbringing, uh, um, I think that they are thinking about the wrong examples typically. They're thinking about uh, issues pertaining to honor, right? Like if you, you know, uh, uh, if you call somebody uh, your, your professor by the first name in some cultures, that might be totally taboo. Um, whereas here, it, it's usually okay to call your professor by the first name. Well, that's that's a conflict. But well, uh, some cultures I think moralize they. They treat certain issues as moral issues when they're really not. They don't really have centrally to do with harming other people. 